Well, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Oh. You know, we are blessed and highly favored, and it's becoming more and more obvious right, to us. You can't deny that the Lord will have his way if you surrender, you submit, you come, not looking for anything but him. Whew. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We thank you. Uh, we praise you today. We ask that the glory, of course, continues, but you give us ears to hear and a heart to receive, Lord, so that we enter in. Oh, we get it. We get it today in our hearts. We get what you want us to know, and we keep it. We say, so let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whew. Well, welcome to 2023. We started, what, last week? Just a, what a New Year's you know, resolution, be safe, right? I think you, know, you make a goal, be free as you can be, 2023. Be free as you can possibly be, okay? We're not going to be totally free till we get to heaven, but as free as you can be in 2023. We started to talk about that. Oh, and this thing's happening, by the way. You know, the Lord shows me these things. We talked about the dark and the light, right? The clash. No, it's obvious now, okay? The clash of the kingdoms, no gray area, okay? Battle lines are drawn. We know it, it's true. But the Lord showed me this, like we talked about it last week, quick, like a military move, all right? Where we were just, right? We remember this darkness doesn't move. Oh, we think, the, oh, look at what the enemy's doing. Oh, yeah, now he's got some things he's going to do at the end times. But darkness responds to the light. The light makes the darkness move. And the Lord showed me this. You know, some of you know I've been in the military. And uh, so I have these things. God will use it because, you know, I've seen, you know, I look up and say, okay, here's how we're going to move, you know, in the intel field. And this is how the, the formations go. Well, you can imagine this, like two... <clears throat> You got the dark and you got the light, right? You got the good guys, you got the bad guys. You got the kingdom of God, you got the kingdom of darkness. But the Lord is showing me now, uh, just last week, he said there's a move because sometimes we wonder. We've, we've worked hard. Some of us, you know, worked really hard last year. Like, what's going on, Lord? We did, we did. We didn't really see what we thought we were going to see. You know, we pushed and we did and we submitted and we spoke. He said what's happened is now that the light has gone up the middle. So the flanks, if you will, if you know the flank, the left and the right on either side, right? Now the light comes in is breaking through. I'm like, Lord, yeah, well, that's cool. That's a military move. You break down the middle. You separate the forces. You know, what's that about? Because a kingdom divided can't stand. And so the glory's going through. So the, the dock to your left, oh, yeah, it's still there. Dock to the right, yep, I'm sorry, it's still going to be there. But the glory is breaking through. And then you got the left and the right. They don't know. They don't agree now on everything. And you know how God works. He loves the enemy to beat up on himself. That's the best way to do it. So he showed me that. And then he showed me the calendar. I, I'm, I'm praying. I'm asking. Because this is the Lord put this on my heart. This year, if you don't have a calendar, you know, not just, you know, it, just as long as you have a calendar, okay? But if you can get a big one, get one that you can, you can hold up. You can see January and you can see December at the same time, right? So you get, it's time to redeem the time. Right. If you get a calendar, puts in little blocks, you know, little blocks. And it's not like, OK, where did it all go? I don't know what happened. But you take control, redeem it, take back possession. That's what redeem means. Take back possession. Don't let the enemy steal from you. Look at it and plan. And we said last week, the plan. You just want the plan. No more. Oh, let me see. I had some great plans. I'll admit it. I had some good plans. I had some great plans. I worked them hard. I worked them hard, you know. Half my life, I say, because I believe I'll, I'll live to 100. Well, about half my life, I tried these plans. They were good plans. They were smart plans. They were plans that would either lead to a dead end or literally take me off. Painful when you fall from the cliff. It's too late to go back, but there is the plan for each one of you. That's what you want to live just for this year, okay? 
And after January comes where we forget about, you know, doing that, it's not going to happen this year. Because every day is a gift. Imagine if you took control of it and, and you said, Lord, what do you want to do in April? What do you want to do? And you think, well, it's going to be, it's going to be like, am I going to go to Israel? I want to go to Israel. You know, something magnificent. Is it going to be that one? It might be, no, you're going to make extra sandwiches and you're going to, you're going to give here or something, right? God wants to do something through you. The plan is supernatural, right? Your plan, he wrote down for you. It took time. See, God is willing to take the time before you even formed. There's an element of thinking about you he called you by name. He made you with a plan. He wrote it down, as we talk about. So how do we do, how do we live this year? How do we take hold of it? How do we take possession? Well, we got to live differently, and we got to make some new habits, all right? Because habits are made by what you do every day, and then it comes easier because it just becomes like part of, this is what I do. This is what I do. The distractions... The Lord's really been talking to me about this. And I'm letting things go left and right, things I thought I might be involved with. The distractions have to go. This year, distractions have to go. And you've got to get yourself focused on what the plan that God, only the plan of God that he has. So how do we do this? God says, you know, for example, Romans 1.17, the just, the ones that he called, the ones that he's justifying, sanctifying, they live a certain way. They live by something. They live by faith. They live by faith, not by sight. They walk by faith. It's by faith. And when you get things accomplished that are amazing, it doesn't make sense. And people say, how in the world? How did you do that? I mean, that's, it's impossible. By faith. Now, they may not understand what you're saying, but by faith, that's going to be the answer. You know, how many times do we read Galatians 2.20? We all know it. Imagine if we said, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going to be settled in my situation based on the scripture, Galatians 2.20. God doesn't waste his time. He's telling us things here. I want to get today. Because today can change your whole course. It could change everything. Because start now you're like, wait a minute, why was I doing over there? Why did I look at the calendar and only put the birthdays, put the one vacation I hope I can get to, or, or whatever it is? Why didn't I like say, God, you have the plan. Why aren't I planning for the plan? Well, maybe next day. Well, this is, this is it. This is the day. Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. There's no longer I that live. I'm sorry to tell you this, but it, you're, you, it's no longer you that live. If you are a believer, if you've submitted to God, you made him your Lord and your Savior, well then, it's no longer the you that you know that lives. All right? So you have to, the enemy, see, that's, well, why do I keep thinking that? I mean, I think it's all about me. Isn't it all about me? No, the enemy tells you it's all about you. God says, you've been crucified with Christ. He didn't only die for you, right? He died as you, so you can be free. So you've been crucified with Christ. Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life, which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. I live by faith. We all know I live by faith. That's how I live, in the Son of God. King James says the faith of the Son of God, it's faith. It's faith. It's still, it's faith. You live, how am I going to do this? By faith. By faith, right? Go to Hebrews 11. Everything's done by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. We have to live the life, okay, and plan for it. Plan for it by faith. I, I think maybe Wednesdays we do, you know, the group that gets together for Bible study. Bring your calendars. And if you want to come, if you can get together on a Wednesday, there's nothing better you can do but plan this year to be free as can be in 2023 and actually write it down. And I can say, Rick, you know, it's coming up April 23rd. Or whatever it is. Little th we encourage each other to stick to the plan, the plan. I know the plan. I know the plan that I have. And we don't even go to God for it. Figure we could figure it out. Can't figure it out. 
We've got to have that confidence, that trust, that humility, the sold out. No option B. No, no, no option. One option. And then this one gets you, too, if you look at Romans, right? And it says, for Romans 14, 23, the end of that verse, for whatever is not a faith is sin. Now, it's not the sin that's going to make you go to hell, but it's sin. So it's like God saying, I know this makes no sense. I know, you, you know you're going to be a little bit strung out on this, but I'm telling you to do this. That's faith. But when you say, well, yeah, I know that sounds good, and I'm, you know, I'll get to it maybe, but I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, that's sin. I mean, come on. That's like, you don't want that on you. This year, let's use that ingredient, right? Faith. Faith is a substance. It's an ingredient. Okay. Added. People, you guys, you know, I don't know how many cooks we have in here. I know we've got, we got some. And, uh, but if you're going to cook, you're going to cook. Oh, I want to make a great meal. Okay. It's the holidays, or just like my wife, every, every meal, praise the Lord, we eat good. It's like a holiday. It's like a holiday all the time. I'm like, oh, Sandra, what in the world? But I'm blessed. We're blessed. But the ingredients, the ingredients, what do you do? What do you, you know, you take time. What are we going to make? Okay, all right, so we need a little bit of this. We need a little bit of that. You take time, and you put in the right stuff. And you come up with an awesome meal. Sometimes we all take pictures, right, when you get it right. I know, yeah, it's not. Okay, so you take a picture. Man, that's so beautiful. I've got to take a picture of it, and then I'll eat it. But you know what? What about the ingredients that we need to take from the supernatural realm into this realm, right? How about taking the time for that, right? We take the time. We put in the right things. Though we treat what God's given us to take from the invisible, if you will, to the visible, like a ham sandwich, you know, or a frozen hot dog or something. We just, well, you know, doesn't it just work if I go to him? He wants you to take your time. You know, I think, you know, if God had a love language, you know, he loves everything. He is the definition of love. He is love. But how about quality time? You know, like, what do you want to make? Imagine that. Imagine if you took the time. So I think this is the year. I want to encourage us to get together. You know, look, hey, listen, I know you all have faith. I'm not saying you don't have faith, okay? It's like, you know, if I know if I look in any of your cupboards, right, we go together. Fred just moved. We'll give him a chance to stock up his cupboards. But we all have, if you're looking for ingredients, right? We all got it. Oh, you know, you look in there. I can never find anything, but it's usually because it's right in front. But if you look in the cupboards, right, you're like, I got faith. Come on, I got faith. Faith as a mustard seed. I got a lot of those, you know. Faith as a mustard seed. I got those, you know. Faith that moves mountains. I think I have some in the back, but I can't reach it. But, but maybe it's in there, right, somewhere. You know, we have the faith, but are we using it? Are we taking the time to put it in? Faith is the substance of what God puts in your mind. Now, if faith is the substance, you want to make a cake. You know, people say you can't have your cake and eat it too. What is that about? I never understood that. Yeah. I mean, it's if you want to make a cake if you're not going to eat it. But people are like, why would you want to just keep a cake? Well, whatever it is. I mean, you can make your cake, right? But in order to make the cake, you've got to put the right things. You can't just throw things in there. You know, I'm going to put some spinach and, you know. I mean, you take the time because you want something to come forth from the effort you're putting in. Yeah. We don't do it. Not enough. We don't do it. We don't do it enough. Faith is this, that substance of things hoped for, the evidence, that's Hebrews 11, of not, things not seen. By faith, we understand that the world was formed by the word. You have to, is it, you have to, it's the substance that holds things together. You hope for, hope is God put your imagination together. Not the enemy. Even though sometimes you're thinking things like, oh, man, what am I, you know. But imagination is supposed to be used for hope. God shows you, this is what I want you doing. I want you to see yourself doing it. I want you to see yourself doing it. Oh, I can see myself doing that. But you have to add the faith to it. I mean, you could look at, I guess, some recipe cards. we got all kinds of crazy Recipe cards, you know, you get the vision. Ooh, that's it. Yeah, I want that, 
right? Okay, that's good, but how's that gonna, how's that gonna, you know? Well, there's, there's, there's directions, but you, right? So I have the best chocolate chip cookies, okay, I'm telling you, that's my kid. Oh, dad, just last night, and, and we, you know, we don't have chocolate chips, okay, so I get off the hook, but dad, make your chocolate chip cookies, they're the best, they are. I'm like, oh my gosh, they are the best, and they're the best. And like, oh, how, I mean, what is it? Sandra gives me a recipe, you know, here's the greatest recipe. I just look at it and I follow the directions. <laughs> exactly. I just follow the directions. Everybody else wants to cut corners. Honey, you're supposed to go in the refrigerator for a little while. Oh, don't let it stay that long. We're hungry. Or just, we don't need to. It's right there on the box. It's right there on the box, right? It's not going to help you if you're reading the Word of God and say, oh, man, I can make those cookies. I can make them. They're going to be good. Woo, yeah. Someday, I mean, I know how to do it. Someday, someday, we're going to eat good. Someday, uh, hello, hello? God put the recipe right down. Why aren't we following the recipe? It's right there. Oh, and then you're a magnificent chef. Oh, you're the greatest. Oh, okay, whatever. I just followed it. I just said, then I just followed it. I mean, but that's all God wants. He's not looking for you to make it up. Sandra can make up things. I don't know what she doesn't even know. What she, would you make this? Um, I don't know, I put some of this stuff. That's different. But if you know what you want to make, you follow this recipe. It's right here. By faith, by faith, we understand from the invisible makes the visible. That's how it works. What's in heaven, God's already given it to me. We know the grace, it's already done. Yeah, but where is it? I don't, I don't get it. Like, yeah, well, great, by grace, God gave you every blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, that's like looking at your recipe cards. Ooh, someday, Rick, we're going to eat. Someday we're going to eat. It's going to be great. I could just see it. Well, make it. Make it come to pass. It's there. It's right there in the box, on the page. By faith. You know, you read, uh, you know, 11, Hebrews 11. By faith, we understand. By faith, Abel knew, right? He saw, God, what do you want me to bring? Okay. Now, it cost him his life, but God appreciated it. Here you go. Everybody, right, by faith, Enoch just walked with the Lord. Noah, by faith, he just saw, Lord, what do you want me to do? Can't stop the morning when I was saying, Lord, what do you want to do today? I want you to build an ark. Oh, okay. On the sand? I want you to build an ark. All right, Lord. Kept checking. Must have kept checking in. Lord, really? An ark? I mean, is that? Yeah, it's an ark. Big one. Big one. On the sand. On the sand. And then he started to tell Noah, okay, well, this is what's going to happen. So he got a little bit of encouragement. It took him, like, they say, probably between 55 and 75 years. Imagine your neighbor, if you lived in the desert, you know, like, well, there's Mike again. He's, I don't know. He's building that thing. We don't even know what it is. But God tells you, you just do it. So by faith. Nothing happened in the Bible. We love these characters. You know, we love these, these people that did some amazing things. But it's all by faith. Abraham left. He went out. He listened to God. Sarah laughed it off until the baby was in her belly. It's all by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. The just shall live by faith. Well, I just can't, I just can't, can't get a hold of this Christian thing. I mean, it's like, you know, I believe God. I believe. I have faith. Yeah, it's in your cupboard. I have faith. And, uh, you know, I mean, someday. No, today is the day. And you're going to put it on the calendar. You're going to start cooking up some stuff. And I'm going to check in. Fred, what are you making today? You know, what are we doing? What are we doing? Time's running out. I mean, time's running out. I'm telling you. All right, because the, the time is running out. Even if Jesus doesn't come back within the next few days or next week or whatever, that's okay. But your time's running out. I'm just telling you. I'm sorry. You know, people get all upset. If you're a believer and your, your time is up, you go across, that's a celebration. Okay, I'm not going to be crying at your funeral. I'm sorry. It sounds mean. No, I'm going to be celebrating. Okay, but in the meantime, if you think you're here, if you are here, well, do what God's told us to do. I mean, really, 
You know, I'm talking to myself too. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm on the road. We, we have to live by faith. That means everything that's coming out of the darkness. Oh, can you imagine that? You know, oh, I got so many people that tell me this all the time. That's why. I, and I get it. Oh, can you believe that? There's not a terrible. It's like horrible over there. And even over, over here, there's no so horrible. It's dark. It's like terrible. Can you believe that? Oh, yeah. You know, that's kind of what we're, we're going. You know, I mean, so, so the path, the narrow path. I'm sorry, you got a narrow path. But it's the great path. You can bring everything that God has for you. Imagine if you knew this for sure. Everything like, that you really want, that everyone thinks is crazy because you know, you're not supposed to want that because that's just not the way the world works. But the, all that has in your heart, imagine if you knew, that's mine. And it's supposed to be mine. All heaven is behind you. Your angel is saying, will you come on? I read your book. It's going to work. It's going to work. We're with you. We're... Just get the ingredients. Get the ingredients out. Grace, it's there, it's done. You were saved by grace, through faith. You know that you're saved. If you're saved, you know you're saved. You just know it. Well, can you show me? Did you get a, like a, a card that says, you know, is your ticket punched? No, but you know, right? But it was grace. God provided this way back. Jesus came to provide the way back. But you don't have to wait until your body your earth suit falls apart. You can live now in this realm. Grace, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, it's by grace you've been saved through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift. It's a gift of God. you got to look, Lord, what did you put in my plan? It's all grace. It's not like, well, I don't know if I really... You know, people say... I don't know. I mean, I don't feel right about it. Why am I so blessed? Tell Nicholas and Sarah, you guys are blessed. Sorry, you have to deal with it. You are blessed, special. At your age, you've got anointing on you. Well, yes, all of you have a special anointing. Go for that. The rest of it, just throw it out. It's all a pile of dung, right? Like Paul says. It's all meaningless, Solomon says. What is the thing that drives you? What do you have? Well, it's for you, so you to give it. God's a God of multiplication. Multiplication. If you die with that in you, I'm sorry to say, I mean, Jesus, he's going to hug you anyway and love you for sure, but he's going to say, oh, remember that time, beginning of 2023? You came and you sat there. And I used this crazy guy just to tell you this. And I told you, if you add faith to this, if you believe, all things are possible. All things are possible, and I want you to have this. The plan, remember the plan, the plan. We talked about the plan that I have for you, right, that I know. So, Jesus is walking along. Let's imagine we're walking along with him. He went from Bethany, and he went, you know, to Jerusalem, and on the way, he was like the tree. The tree, right? It's not multiplying. It's not multiplying. It's not multiplying. It's not doing the whole, it's not doing what God gave it, right? The plan, the plan for the fig tree was to produce figs. Okay, it's easy enough. If you're a fig tree, produce figs. So he goes, and of course, we know the story. No figs. So Jesus curses this thing to death. That sounds harsh. God wants you to destroy the works of the enemy. Destroy them. Kill them. Get mad at them. Cancer, oh, I hope. Curse it and curse it to the root so it will die. And then the guy, you know, they're walking along after, like, oh my gosh, it's shocking. You just spoke to this and it died. And Jesus, is like, no kidding. Have faith in God. I've been telling you this for three years, he probably said. Right? Have faith in God. In fact, in fact, Mount of Olives, look at that. Maybe in the back of your cupboard, you, maybe you have some mountain moving faith. He said, you know, speak to it. Speak to it. If you speak to the mountain, if you say to this mountain, get out of my body, get out of my life, get away from my daughter, get lo if you say, if you think about it, you look in your cupboard and you say, well, yeah, I mean, I, I could do that. No. If you take it and you say, and you say out loud, 
be thou removed, get lost out of my life, be cast into the sea. And you don't doubt. You make the recipe. This is going to turn out like a cake, right? It's not chicken. It's going to turn out. If you believe in your heart, what you say shall come to pass. You'll have it. You'll have whatever you say. Therefore, here's the, here's the kicker. Therefore. Therefore. Okay. Everything I said, Jesus says, is based on this. Therefore, whatsoever you desire, that he put in your heart, because the desire really is from heaven, it's from, you know, you know the difference. Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. Okay, this is Jesus talking to them personally. It's not like Paul or somebody else. You can say, well, maybe he missed it. You know, maybe he wasn't reading the box properly. No, Jesus said, when you pray, and this is a revelation the Lord gave me recently, because, of course, we've read this a thousand times, and I know this is what this says, but it's different because when I pray personally, when I pray, I go in my office, and I just melt into the presence of God, so I'm almost not there. When I'm not there, I know I'm, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Right? I'm not there. But that's prayer, not just, you know, declaring, yes, you could do that too. You have to speak out loud. But when, when you pray, then you believe that you receive it. What is that, right? You see your birthday cake. You, you see it. You see yourself going and accomplishing if you're supposed to go to Africa, if God wants you to speak to people in Walmart. You see, you see then you've got it. Once you form that picture, it's yours. When you pray, believe that you receive it. See yourself doing it, and that's the, that's, the, that's the recipe. And then it'll come to fruition. Then you'll say, wow, it happens. And we have multiple, multiple testimonies. You guys have testimonies. It's the way it works. But, you know, we go sometimes, well, okay, I tried that. I'm going to try some other recipe. I'm sorry, those don't work. I mean, you know, and a variation of that. But you have to speak, and you have to see. One more, one more story, maybe, maybe one, maybe two. But the, I love this one about the, um, okay, so which one? Multiplication, multiplication. God's all about multiplication, right? So Jesus tells a story, simple story, you know. God's given you something. He's given you something, right, the talents. He's given it to you. It's not yours. It's not like, well, I'm so glad. Look at me. No, he gave it to you. Okay, hold on to this and, and just do what I'm telling you to do. Believe, right, and wor work it the way I told you. So he gives it, you know, the story. So he's going off, the Lord's going off to acquire a new kingdom, but he has three of his servants that know him. They know him. They know how he works. He, they know the Bible, if you will. They know the word. They know the truth. They know the recipe. And he says, okay, I'm going to give you ten. You have five. You have one. Okay, just have at it. Go. And of course, when you use what you have, it multiplies. Oh yeah, I used that, I multiplied it. In fact, here's your reward, multiplication. The servant with the five, okay, let's do this. Just, I'm just gonna apply the recipe. This is what he always tells us, we're gonna apply the recipe, and then boom, it's multiplied, it's multiplied. And here's your reward, multiplication. Now the guy, you know, he's like, this is like, I'm not gonna do what I know to do. I mean, it's a gift. You know, if I had 10 gifts, maybe I'd do something, but I'm feeling I'm only good at that. So he doesn't use it. He hides it because, you know, he's afraid. Afraid. Fear is also a substance from hell. If you're fe you have to get yourself out of that. Now, I want you to be afraid if you're walking on a cliff. You're like, okay, hold time out. But fear is a substance that's going to bring those things that the enemy wants to come to pass. So he becomes afraid and he hides it. He buries his talent, doesn't give it to anybody, doesn't share his piano giftings or whatever. As you guys do, you share, you share. But he doesn't share. And what happens? You know, he, he doesn't get, well, you know what, little noogie, try better next time. You'll be okay. Maybe someday you'll find out, follow the recipe, even though I told you a thousand times. But, you know, it's okay. No, he says... That's wicked. That's wicked. 
In fact, I'm going to take it from you and give it to you. Why? Because, hey, while you're here, God wants you to multiply. God wants you to multiply. That's the game. That's it. God's a God of multiplication. In fact, I mean, there's different ways to look at the scripture. Okay, it could be, yeah, okay, so if you, don't believe, if you don't receive the gift of salvation, even though you know it's available, but I don't, I'm not, and then you could be tossed. Obviously, you're going to end up in the realm of darkness away from Jesus forever. But in this scenario, just say, listen, he takes it from the person that just won't use the recipe, and he throws them out of the kitchen, never to come back. You're done. You don't have a shot anymore. The cupboards are locked. That's not good. I was just about to use it. I went, went with this one, I think. <clears throat> so, the, the fish and the loaves, right? I love that. God's always teaching us about multiplication. If you see, right? If you believe. Whatsoever you desire. Whatsoever you desire. My, whatsoever you desire. When you pray, believe. And you shall. Believe that you receive it. And you shall have it. So, you know, you know the story. So they go. They're in the big field. People follow Jesus for a long time. You know, days are out there. Their heart and everything. Only one kid is smart enough to bring a lunch, right? Nobody else bring, brought an apple or some kind of sandwich. Only one kid. Like Daniel, probably. He's like, his mother probably told him, well, you bring, you bring a big lunch. I mean, he brought a big lunch, right? But no one else brought a lunch. It's curious to me. So he brings the lunch, and so they're like, you know, the disciples, man, they're starving. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Jesus says, feed them. And he had shown them what to do a thousand times, so he, they should have known. But they're like, but here's the thing. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? Or what can you share? They find one smart kid who brought his lunch. Five loaves, two fish. Five loaves, two fish, 5,000 people. What's in your hand? That's what God wants you to use. Jesus says, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to him. In the glory. In okay, Lord, this is what I have. Driving my John Deere on my lawn. Driving around, listening to this. Man, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want to do? Listen to this, this guy saying, I've got to have land. Land, right? Land is where it's at. Got to have land. It's the Bible talks about land. It talks about. I said, Lord, that's what I need. I need land. And he said, I gave you 8.2 acres. And I was like, well, where is it? Oh, yeah. Some of it's on the cliff. Some of it's over there. But it's there. What's in your hand? Look at the lunch. All right, so what happened? So bring it to me. Bring it to me. Whatever I gave you, bring it to me. He takes it. Right? He takes the, the food. And it says he looks to heaven. He's doing the same thing. Jesus doesn't have, well, I have my own secret recipe. I'm going to give them something so theirs doesn't work. No, the recipe. He does it, right? He looks, right? Okay. He has it in his hand by faith. Whatsoever you desire, he's looking at him. We've got to feed this crowd. We've got to feed this crowd. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, right? He looked up to heaven. He didn't have to look straight up. He didn't bend his neck like that. He looked and he beheld everything, all the people being fed. And he had it. Now, he was in perfect faith. He's got faith. He's done this before. He's never failed. The more you do, the more you can do. So he multiplies, he multiplies, he multiplies, and then he lets the people take part in it. Go, you pass it out. And they're all thinking, looking at each other, how is this? You know, it just keeps coming. It multiplies. God wants to multiply. You put one seed in the ground, you don't get one little, you know, stalk, you get multiple. You get multiple. Even so much so, a friend of mine says this a lot, but it's true. Pick up what's on the ground after, you know, because there's more. There's always even more. There's even more. Two loaves or five loaves, two fishes. Okay, if I can feed 5,000, that's, oh, that's pretty good. But then there's extra. There's always extra. Why? Because God wants you to sow again. It's right there. Just pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. It's a simple recipe.
One more thing. One more. Deuteronomy, we don't always read the Old Testament because, you know, it's the Old Testament. It's old. No, God didn't take away the blessings. He just took care of the curses. So all those things that are good in there are still for you. Okay, so you can go back. You can go back. Go back. And Deuteronomy is a good place to go. And in Deuteronomy 8, you've got to read this when you have to read it, because this is God. He says um, to his people, to us, Deuteronomy 8, I think it's verse, verse 11, but we jump around a little bit. Deuteronomy 8, there's some things, key things. Simple. So simple. It's all God wants. He expects things to work. All he says is be, beware that you do not forget the recipe. The Lord your God is keeping. Is not the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Do not forget. He wants you to multiply. I'm telling you, I'm not great at it, but we started a community garden. These guys helped me. We're doing, we're doing, we're growing. It's, it's about multiplication. Don't forget. And you jump down to verse 13. It says, and when? This is what God has for you. Not maybe, okay, uh, we'll try, we'll see. If perhaps, or sometimes, no, when? 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 When your flocks increase? When your gold and your silver increase? Oh, but I'm not, just, look, when? This is what God wants. This is God. He wants you to increase. When your gold and your silver increase, when everything you have increases, it says, when everything you have, you know, not even in it. So even if you've got a negative mindset, it's too late. He says, when it increases. The only thing that he wants, so you don't get all twisted by the enemy. Verse 18, you shall remember. So Lord your God, he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish the covenant. When you're obedient, God gets to do something he wants to do. So you're baking the cake for the Lord. He wants to give it. He, you're in this with him. You're representing him. I don't want to get to heaven. And I know we all miss it a little bit. And we'll go into our supply closet and we're like, oh, I missed that. God wants you to bring all the spiritual blessings. But I don't want my whole place to be full. Grace is being wasted. It's being wasted. You don't want that. Stop wasting your inheritance. It's like the guy that just found out his uncle died, left him a billion dollars. He keeps walking by the bank, but he just never uses his ATM card. Because he doesn't feel he's worthy, or maybe it doesn't really work. Maybe it's a scam. Whatsoever you desire. God already put it in your supply closet, but you've got to cook it up. You've got to get in the kitchen. We've got to check on each other, because I know a lot of you, today, even today, are going to spend time in the kitchen. And it takes a few steps. It takes a few steps to make something happen. Well, this is the same thing. It's going to take some steps. When you pray, believe that you receive it. Just think about it for a second and stay there. And you shall have it. Redeem the time. Look at your calendar. We'll work on it. I want, to, I want to work on it until. I just think it's the way to do it this year. If we're going to be as free as we can be in 2023, we've got to plan to it. Plan to do it. Hold each other accountable. Take the time to do what God calls you to do and reap the rewards for eternity. Father, we love you. We thank you that we're getting this more and more humbly. We submit to you. We say, Lord, yes, help us to do what you've called us to do. You gave us the plan, our own personal plan that you want to come forth and multiply the goodness for other people to know that you're real and the kingdom is real before the end comes. So, Father, we just thank you. We say seal this in our hearts today. Seal it in our hearts, Lord. Never going to lose it. Never going to lose it. But it's going to grow in conviction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Good morning. Uh, last night we were watching a faith building movie. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it's Muli, M-U-L-L-Y. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's more of a documentary, but it's, um, it's about a, a gentleman in Africa, in Kenya. And um, at the end of the movie, you know, Nicholas said, if he could do that in Kenya, there's no... <laughs> Why can't we do what God told us to do with eight acres? <laughs> you know, and so anyway, I don't want to give it away, but um, go, go and watch it because it talks about, um, you know, the trials of life, uh, things that, um, you know, happen to people, but you don't have to be a product of your circumstances, and it's a, it, it'll, it'll inspire you, um, pull faith out of that cupboard. Um, so anyway, I thank God for that. I thank God that we have testimonies um, that we can watch and, um, and really glorify God and what, what God has done. Amen? You know, there are times when um, the kids will come over and we'll, we'll watch a movie or something, but um, I told my husband I become very intolerant of watching movies that are just not nonsense. Just, I, it's just something in my spirit. I just don't have the tolerance for it. Um, and I told him, I, I don't want to watch anything anymore unless I'm learning something. It's a testimony or a teaching. I just don't want to be filled with anything. But, you know, and there are random days when you just kind of want to, you know, it, we're usually watching homesteading if I'm, if I'm honest. That's usually one of the, okay, I just want to let my mind kind of just relax a little. But I'm usually learning something still. <laughs> but, um I'm so thankful for a God of multiplication. Uh, when I come up and I talk about our, our giving and our giving collectively um, and what the Lord has done this year uh, in the church, um, it is so inspiring. You know, we'll be celebrating uh, in a couple of months, so March 12th. It's actually March 11th, but we're going to celebrate on March 12th. We are celebrating our fifth an year anniversary. Now, none of you were here <laughs> for day one. Linda, if she's watching, she, is, uh, she was here. And for a year, my husband preached to almost nobody. And uh, faithfully. And we would say, listen, the Lord told us to do this, and if it's just us, you're going to preach to us. You're our pastor. <laughs> and so he did. And then finally the Lord said, don't let these seeds just fall to the ground. Capture them. And we started to, um, to broadcast. And so I'm thankful that five years later, he's not preaching to just one person. And so God has been faithful. And uh, I just shared with our family yesterday and a couple of um, uh, people that we uh, love that we were able as a church collectively to give over $14,000 this year to different ministries. And I know I shared that, but that's huge for a little pioneering church in the country thank you lord that we have been able to do such things and so i wanted to give everyone um, a little bit of a recap and share um, what god has done with kenya so um, i know i've mentioned it recently but kenya was um, god dropped kenya in in you know our spirit well actually he connected a pastor with a pastor in Kenya about maybe six to eight months ago now. And, but we had very early last year, right, at the, at the end of 2021 into 22, we, and I believe it might even be on a vision board that we have behind your door, we said, Lord, we want to do missions in Africa. We had been doing missions in, in, um, in India for many years, since 2009. Um, but the but we really felt like we wanted to expand to Africa. So, um, you know, and that's that's what we did. We we put it out there. We asked the Lord um, if if that's something He wanted us to do. Now we get a lot of requests, and so we have to filter through um, a lot of things. But Pastor connected with Pastor Moses in in Kenya, and uh, so God is faithful. He will give you. First of all, He put the desire there, uh, but then He gives you. The desires of your heart and so we have been able to help with um with this particular project i want to show you um pastor moses reached out just a little bit of the backstory he reached out just after 
just on Thanksgiving about the children being sick in the hospital. We can't, you know, the Lord helped us. We helped fund this bill to get them out of the hospital. So that was a blessing. But on the heels of that, and I'll show you, they had one bathroom. It was a shanty, basically, um, servicing 130 orphans and 30 widows. And the bathroom collapsed. So whatever the thing shows the inside, that's fine with me. Um, it had collapsed and no longer was this a viable bathroom for this particular orphanage that he had. And the government was, um, was going to close down the orphanage because, of course, it's not sanitary. Um, so he came to us uh, again. And, you know, and we've talked about this. It can, it can be a little bit overwhelming because you're thinking, oh, my gosh, Lord, how are we going to, you know, provide this? But if we remember why the Lord gives us wealth, that scripture is so wonderful. It's to, to um, fulfill the covenant that he has. He has covenant. He's a covenant-keeping God. And so when we um, receive, we're able to give. And I want to I just take a minute and show. And if you're watching online, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to see this because I'm not that tech savvy just yet. But for those of you here, That last picture um, is a picture of what the final um, you know, schematic will look like. Now, we'll see if it ends up looking like the engineer had um, designed it, but that's exciting. When Pastor kept talking that we serve a God of multiplication, we serve a God of multiplication. <laughs> I was thankful to see that there were going to be 12 bathrooms, not just one. That's a whole lot of people. <laughs> and, you know, there's something about giving people dignity. You know, um, anyway, I'm going to read from today's scripture. I just wanted to see, for those of you, wanted you to see, for those of you that have put your hand to that, um, I'm going to read some scripture and show you what the Lord considers. So Psalm 41 says, Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he will ble be, be blessed on the earth. Thank you, Lord. And then Proverbs 19 says, He who has pity or looks on the poor lends to the Lord. And he will pay back what he has given. You know, when I read that scripture, I thought, Lord, it says that we lend to you. Well, that's an interesting concept. When we give to the poor, when we help someone who's, um, you know, listen, we're, we're focusing on the poor in this particular case in Kenya. But sometimes the poor is our neighbor, our very neighbor in our neighborhood. Or someone who we know can't make their car payment or someone who can't make their, you know, their mortgage that month. Um, we're... we're supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, but how can we help if we're not, you know, if we don't have the understanding that we are created to be um, providers for the kingdom, right? We're created to have wealth. And so, um, you know, we've been talking about some things we're going to do. And we want to thrive. We don't want to just survive. We want to be able to thrive in this new year. And in order to thrive, we have to operate in all of the principles. And we're not going to get it 100%. But 
but we're going to try. We're going to at least pull all those ingredients out, right? And sometimes, listen, I've made some recipes. You know, we're talking about recipes today. I've made some recipes where I have to say, I missed it somewhere, and it didn't come out the way it was supposed to. And I'll have to try it again. Well, that's like, you know, taking God's principles and say, well, Lord, I missed it. I, I know this isn't you. I'm going to try again. Right? I'm going to try again. I'm going to speak the word again. I'm going to stand in faith for my healing again. I'm going to pray over my children again. I'm going to stick with it until I see the results that I'm supposed to get. Not just give up. Amen? So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, that we were able to see how you take the substance that we give you, Lord, the financial blessing, how we, when we give, Lord, that you're able to multiply it. So, Father, we're so, so grateful. We're so thankful, Lord. I know that, as the scripture says, that we lend to you. We can't even comprehend, Lord, what that looks like. But, Lord, we know it's a good thing. And so I thank you for those that have put their hand to the plow, those that have said, yes, let that be me. Let me be one of those that feed the kingdom, that sow into the kingdom, that stand by the word of God. Believe you and have faith. I believe, Lord. I believe that you will multiply it back because this is who you are. So I thank you for the finances of this house. I thank you for those that have sown graciously and generously. May it be blessed back to them a hundredfold. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So we're going to receive communion as we do every Sunday. The elements should be there, close by. You know, as, as uh, Sandra was, was speaking, the Lord just quickened this to my heart. You're not, you're not supposed to owe any man. Okay, don't miss this. But if you lend, you want a good, you, your 401k maybe not doing so good, you're looking for a good investment plan, the best. If you lend to God, just think of the interest rate <laughs> he gives you, right? And he's always on time. He's never late. Think about that. Why wouldn't we give more to the Lord? It's work. Lend it. Let it come back. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. So, Father, we ask you in this time, in this moment, to bring us together in one thought as the body, Lord, connected, as if we were together sitting around the table at the Last Supper, Lord, when you reminded us to remember, remember, to remember. It's important. It's in our hearts, in our minds. So as we hold the bread in our hands, help us, each one of us, together to remember that Jesus willingly took a beating for you. Over and over, his back torn open, his body, stripes, blood. Why? Because he knew that the root cause of every disease, germ, virus, anything that come against the human body, he was working to destroy it. And he went to the cross, that perfect antidote, that perfect healing, the supernatural wellness was created. And as you put the bread. As we take the bread together, remember, one of the gifts of God is supernatural, perfect health. Let's take the bread together. And Father, again, as, as we <clears throat> hold the cup, as we hold the cup in our hands, help us again as the body together as one to remember. Jesus willingly went to the cross 
The enemy had nothing in him. He was not forced to do anything. He willingly went to the cross because he could see. For the joy that was set before him, he could see how the Father would be happy. And he allowed himself to be nailed by man, simple man, nailed to the cross, hands and feet, pierced in his side. But when that blood was shed, when the blood was released, or oh, something <clears throat> supernatural, amazing. Right? All sin was destroyed. All power of sin was destroyed, and everything on your account was wiped, cleaned. Every sin you ever committed, every single one of them, big, small, terrible, little, all sin you ever committed was wiped away. And every sin you're going to commit, will commit, no matter what, is forgiven. Along with every sin ever committed against you. Maybe even before you're in your mother's womb. Every sin committed against you, all of it, and every sin that will be committed against you until the day you cross over to eternity. The power of it was destroyed by the blood. And the veil was torn open. And now the kingdom is open to you to partake of every blessing. Hallelujah. To partake of the divine nature. To be the person God calls you to be here on earth. Let's take the cup together. <clears throat>